It's a hologram Lawrence yeah. Taylor recovering the fumble well, of the Roger Craig. Well, I would throw that card away. No, you have to keep it. I would have You it have away. to. I hate to I say that you have I to keep it. it away. So uh, back in the spring during basketball season, Justin Hathaway, his son, he's one of the program, uh, one of the managers at NBC. Man, they can have they they're they're tight. And his son Colin needs some shoes, so I hooked him up with some J's. Some J's that I never wear. I was like, couldn't fit him. Hooked him up with some J's. So he returned a week later. He got me a hat, and he found a hat. I thought about wearing it, but I'm probably not going to wear it ever. It's just going to sit in the house. It's a red 49ers hat with three peat on it. Yeah, I'm I'm good off that. And it had the little logo on it, yeah. and I was like, and it was a great gesture. Finding it, finding that hat or whatnot, because I remember one of my uncles. When they lost that game, he was wearing a black 49ers three-peat hat. And that kick went through the uprights by Matt Barr. And I cried and cried and cried and cried all night long. I couldn't believe it. I was I, As a kid, I was distraught. Distraught. Niners couldn't move the ball at all in that game. Oh, um, Belichick did a great job. He said, he told Bell Parcells in their 30 for 30, he said, if we play zone against this team, they're going to carve us up. We need to play man defense and get physical. Sounds similar. And, and, Sounds and, similar and, to what and, 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 if, and if you look at the numbers in the 80s with the Giants and the Niners, those games were tough. So you asked a question, though. I know tonight we're just celebrating football's return. You asked a question about Aaron Rodgers that I found to be quite provocative. We, we've had this Aaron Rodgers 49er every conversation year. Every, year. every year. But give me that one one more time, the one you said before the end of the break. So with the Chiefs chasing history, that, that, that sucks because they are chasing history. But – it is, basically, when we think about Aaron Rodgers. And do we have the sound of Aaron Rodgers? If we play this sound, it would do it some more justice here. But we all remember the draft when they selected Alex Smith number one overall. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. The only game I watched with Alex Smith that year was the Fiesta Bowl, the Bowl against game, Pittsburgh. Yeah, which we all saw. And they beat one ranked team all season long. Aaron yeah. Rodgers was in our backyard, and we saw him at the L.A. Memorial Coliseum with Keith Jackson announcing the game. Start off the game, what was it, 22 for 22, 23 for 23 or and whatnot? Throw away. And, <laughs> I mean, he was spinning it so well. That was the number one team in the country. Jeff and MacArthur, had, Chase Lyman. Yep, Chase Lyman got hurt. That, broke his leg in that I, game. That team St. Francis. So much St. Fun. Francis of Mountain View. And who's your running back? It was a long name. Started with an E. Oh. Esh, uh, uh, somebody would know it. Somebody would know it. Uh, but basically, he was running hard that day. Mm -hmm. And they had first and 10 inside the 10-yard line. And Jeff Tefford decided to throw the ball four straight times. And they lose 23-17 at the L.A. Memorial Coliseum. <laughs> As a number seven, college game day was at that game. That's how big it was. So I'm thinking right then and there, all oh, the 49ers got their quarterback. J.J. Arrington. J.J. Arrington was a running back? Yeah. How many carries did he get in that game? Uh, he's of the football American that year. I mean, geez, they had Ryan that year. Remember was Ryan it that same, Riddle? that same year? I yeah. thought it was somebody else. And Texas Tech, man. I thought it was somebody else. Well, no, they lost the tech. They lost the Texas Tech. Oh four. Oh four. Yeah, I'm looking at the old. That was the year the Cal should have gone to the and Rose they Bowl, didn't, but Mac, and Mac Brown Jones complained and or not Mac Jones. What was the guy? Mac, Mac Brown. Brown. Mac Brown. Brown. Mac Brown complained that Texas should yes. be in the Rose Bowl and forced Cal out. So that's uh, so you know when they didn't draft there on Rodgers, and I remember the dialogue. The dialogue during that whole draft process. Mike Donald was like, "Well, you know, with Alex Smith, he opens the door for women." If I tell him to, to dribble a marble, he's going to dribble a marble. If I tell him to jump off, he's going to do it on the spot. He's such a good guy. Did and he really ESPN, say he yeah. opens door for women? You, 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 you didn't, didn't hear this? He, he, he was no, like, oh, he, he said that Aaron Rodgers was too arrogant and cocky. Right. They also, at the time, and Ooh. I'll never forget it, they took Alex Smith and said, we might trade back to the number four spot with Tampa Bay and just take Aaron Rodgers too. Right. What? This is the era of giving quarterbacks 40 and $50 right. million dollars guaranteed right. before the, the CBA changed. Before the Jakarkis right. Russell. Yeah. Not, not only that. Not only Mike that. Nolan was, think about this, the guy was a defensive coordinator for one year because Marvin Lewis was yep. really the architect of that Baltimore Ravens. And they said, here's the keys to the franchise, and you pick a guy on that side of the board, right. just figure it out. No, he, Just figure it out. I mean, I mean, Aaron Rodgers was sitting there thinking, what does this have to do with playing quarterback? And he slips all the way to 24. And then on draft night, when he does get selected by the Green Bay Packers, but only let me know when you have it. Here's what Aaron Rodgers said. How disappointed are you that you will not be a, a 49er? Not as disappointed as the 49ers will be that they didn't draft me. So at this point, I know the Niners have beaten Rodgers a number of times, a number of times in the playoffs. They basically owned him since Harbaugh showed up. But he does have a Super Bowl. Okay, it was ancient, ancient history. He's got a Super Bowl. We were just talking about guys who have yeah, Super Bowls and got rings. 
We we can't we can He's got a Super Bowl. He's at the table. He's got one more than my favorite quarterback growing up, Dan Marino. Mm-hmm. All right, he's got one more than Jim Kelly, who's in the Hall of Fame. You can Pro make Football the argument he is one of the more disappointing playoff quarterbacks. Aaron Rodgers. Well, they've had some disappointing losses. Well, he tapped out against the Niners multiple times. He's he got lost a, to Jimmy G on a Saturday night. Well, well, like he they, lost to the Niners defense. Well, I, I'm real. just saying. And their special teams let him down. Jimmy didn't even uh, execute an offensive touchdown that that game. Their special teams let them down. But with that said. He still has the ring. He still has a seat at the table. And he has one more than the Niners has during this entire tenure. And and by the way, as he spent all that time in Green Bay, the Niners have been looking for quarterbacks left and right. How many quarterbacks have they gone through since that draft? So is that still one of the biggest regrets for Niner fans? My number one regret. At least, and, and this is just more recent. Like, I I wish Barry Sanders came out of retirement. Yeah. I wish Hurst never got hurt. I wish Lawrence Phillips blocked. Like, no, no, no. The easiest one for me is I wish they would have said yes to Tom Brady. It's not Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Who knows what Aaron would have become with the Niners and, and, and how dysfunctional they were. Who knows if he would have been upright because he would have been playing from the get-go. I still think he would have been good. I think he would have been better than than Alex Smith. That's to me that that whole argument of Aaron would have been exactly like Alex. No, he wouldn't have. I think he's just a better football player than than Alex Smith, and I think he's a more uh, astute football mind than Alex ever was. It's the easiest one for me. You just say goodbye to Jimmy after the twenty twenty season uh, and, and or twenty nineteen season, and you say hello to Tom Brady, and you got at least one super. I'm. In my mind, I know there's this whole Shanahan's got to work with them and all that. It's Brady. Brady yeah. would have won one of these Super Bowls for the Niners. One, just one. And he would have been the conquering hero coming home, you know, ending his career with the Niners, getting number 12, pulled out of retirement. It would have been all time. There's a lot of regrets for me. The Brady one is that's number one. Large. Number one for me no, is Brady. Th- th- that's, that's a good one. I don't know what number one is for me. Is it passing up Deshaun Watson or Patrick Mahomes? Is it Harbaugh rushing with Kaepernick in Seattle, trying to go for the juggler there and get the pass tip by Richard Sherman into the hands of Malcolm Smith? Is it not drafting Aaron Rodgers? Is it? I, I don't know what my biggest regret is. Rodgers is up there. Brady at the time, look, I I understood where Shanahan was coming from, but again, if from my vantage point, it felt like Shanahan never felt Jimmy G on that level. So for Shanahan to tell Kawakami, like, I'd stop, Jimmy deserved a shot. It was mind-boggling to me because he was talking about Kirk Cousins the whole time. And the way he coached that Super Bowl, especially in the first half, it was like, well, you don't trust him anyway. So move off of him. That's a huge regret. The Brady one's starting to loom large for me. It's starting to loom, starting to loom very large for me. What is it, Niner? But I want to hear from Niner fans. Forget my regrets. What's your regret? Like, I'm looking at the 408 right now, Sasky, and we'll get to the calls in just a second. 408, Xfinity Mobile Text Line. It's a no-brainer for me. Yes, the Niners regret not getting Rodgers. Don't overthink this. First ballot Hall of Famer. He's a Hall of Famer. I, I and think, great players do figure it out. I think that, um, you know, there's a lot of different regrets. There's watching the Joe Montana Peacock doc, like obviously there was a lot of people within the Niners organization that regretted trading Joe Montana. Mm. That was a very controversial move. Mm. Trading Charles Haley, very Mm. controversial. Mm. You know, allowing Ronnie Lott to leave Mm. in the protected free agency thing that they had going on in 1991. Plan B, right? That's like what they the, called it. <laughs> allowing Ricky Waters to leave, right? Like, yeah, they, they, there's a lot of they what they Ricky Waters. What about, uh, what about, uh, 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 damn, it just slipped my mind. Uh, let Jerry Rice go. I mean, what about let T.O. trading that, him that to was, Philadelphia? That was a large part finances, yeah, but I you know, hear that. But you, you know, know, it's Jerry yeah, Rice. No, no it's doubt. Jerry Rice. It's Jerry Rice. This is a good one. 6 5 0. Or is this going to be out on the list before we get out to the lines? The biggest regret has to be giving up picks to get Trey Lance. Probably one of the worst, probably the worst draft pick of all time. Now, I'm not going to go that far because there's been a lot of bad picks. Jamarcus Russell all lied one. Riley Leaf all lied two. It's a bad Kajana trade. Card- Kajana Carter tearing up his knee before he even plays with the Cincinnati Big. I mean, it's a lot of bad picks. Ooh, this is a bad this pick. This is the ghost of Trey Lance. Well, boy. What is the biggest regret you have as a Niner fan as we get ready to play here? Is Aaron Rodgers still the biggest regret? Let's go to Oreo Cookie in Oakland. Let's start off with him here on the morning. Russell, what's up, Oreo Cookie? Hey, 
Hey, what up, you guys? Um, yeah, you, you're definitely right about the Aaron Rodgers. That is the number one. I mean, it just sucks that he was out here in our backyard. And one of the reasons I've heard that we didn't pick him is because he was kind of arrogant, kind of cocky, California yep. cocky is what I heard. Um, and that's just a poor excuse. Uh, Nolan was straight old school. Um, and I don't think he realized the new school that was coming in. Um, but I do have another one, which is in the Harbaugh Super Bowl, not giving Frank Gore the ball at the five-yard line, not even once. Mm. That's got to be up there, too. Mm. Where's that up there for you? I mean, of course that's up there. But but that that whole game, there's like it's littered with mistakes. Yeah. Chris Culliver got dominated in that game after saying horrible things and – you know, Whitner didn't have a great game. Can I be honest with you about that game? We should have got blown out. I was a little hurt about the loss, but I went to school the next day. I was fine. No, I was devastated. Because, no, you know, I'm going to tell you why I wasn't devastated. Because that entire week they weren't buttoned up. Well, <laughs> Chris Culliver was chirping, <laughs> saying what he was saying. Randy Moss was all of a sudden popping off. Oh, I'm better than Rice. You know, Alex Smith, they forced Alex Smith to be out there immediate day, and he's taking questions from Deion Sanders in a very uncomfortable spot. Coming off his best game and they getting benched. You know what I'm saying? Now, I still think it was the right move because the offense took off with Colin Kaepernick, especially that season. But there's a lot of things they did that week. Jim Harbaugh was tight all week. They had the coaches' conference. John Harbaugh's in a suit, tie, looking good. Jim Harbaugh's in full coaching gear with a whistle around his neck, being quirky and just tight. It's like, dude, dial it down. Like His brother outcoached him. So bad. It was, but the lights going out and everything. And if they win that Super Bowl, there's an all time asterisk on it. People outside the Bay Area is going to say, oh, it's an asterisk. Well, lights went out, Ray blah, blah, Lewis, blah. Deer antler spray. I, mean, it was just, I, well, I heard Lil Neal bring up win. Ray Lewis yesterday. And I'm like, God, the deer antler spray that week was the most ridiculous thing. He did steroids. It was, he tore his pec and I mean, played in the same season. I it's mean, like impossible. I mean, steroids in the NFL, like I kind of just, like, and Look then the Randy, Randy talking like, all this smack wait, that whole week wait, about how he's better on, than Rice quick. and doesn't even make an effort to go after the, it was a slightly overthrown ball from Kaepernick. He's just kind of like, eh. Did steroids bother you in the NFL? No. You've been doing it for years. This is, this is the problem. He got caught red-handed <laughs> the week of the Super Bowl, and they're like, nothing to see here. And it was like it was just like the Otani thing. It was like, nothing to see? Nothing to see. Ray Lewis caught red-handed? Crazy. Oh, boy. Um, he was taking a steroid uh, to recover from a torn pec. It was so obvious. And everyone was like, of course everyone's doing this. No one had ever, if I say deer antler spray, there's only one thing you think of. Wow. I'm getting, I got two of these back to back. And then I got a question for you about the regrets. I got two of these back to back. Putting a, you know, punt returner back after the guy's already muffed 10,000 uh, punts. That's one of them. Yeah, but of course. Coach, uh, Coach Buck. Former head coach of Reardon Basketball, yeah. what up, Coach Buck? And then Worldwide Half. What they said. in with the same regret. What? Is the biggest regret moving the team from Candlestick Park to Levi Stadium. Wow. Where's that rank you up there as regrets? On that one. And then I guess there's some new tailgating rules. What's going on in the tailgating rules? I don't rules? know. Everyone was, Do you got to make a big what, deal about what, the tailgating. What, what's going on with the tailgating? I don't know. I haven't looked into Somebody it Somebody who knows, let us know. Yeah, all right. Want to give us a call about that? Where does that rank? In, Moving from Candlestick if, to Levi's. If you bring up, if you bring up, you know, tailgating in my mind, <laughs> and this is just going way back, it, the propaganda. And I know he's your buddy, and I love him. I do. I love him. Mm. But Fitz jamming it down my throat that the fan experience at Levi's is going to be so superior because of the tailgating Stop. when it was like the least accurate of all of the propaganda Stop points it. that Jed had him read for a decade straight. Just jamming, just jamming just the fan experience down my throat as a listener. So Drove me nuts. I love you, Fitz, but you were reading, well, literally like Jed gave him the script to read. Uh, all right, don't, Peter. don't talk about that. All right, Peter Bob Fitzgerald ever coming he on this show. He knows I love him. I live oh, with these people. People. I love experience. these people. Like, They're I part of my family. family. I right. tailgate every week. R.I.P. to the, Bob Fitzgerald ever coming on the show again. Fonte. Of all the parts of <laughs> Levi Stadium, Lord. the least fan friendly is the, the fan experience in the tailgate oh, area. Man. Come on. Uh, That's stupid. Don't say that again. Come on. Uh, I'm going to leave that alone. They made that um, such a big deal. Did they not? I, 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 don't, I don't remember. Um, 405. <laughs> what is oh, going on here? I love them. Line. Reggie White going to Green Bay instead of the 49ers. It changed the NFC.
God told him to go to Green Bay, and he went to Green Bay. So we're blaming God. I mean, that's what Reggie White said. God steered him to Green Bay. The only person God ever told to go to Green Bay, Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> I may have to make that my road trip this year. They're playing Green Bay Thanksgiving, yeah. the, the weekend yeah. uh, of Thanksgiving. Yeah. I have to do that. Green Bay or Buffalo, man. I got to go to a road game. Got to go to a road game. Maybe it's Green Bay. Because they're going to be good, too. I get to see Jordan Love. I saw Jordan Love last year. but um, <laughs> Levi's, the, the traffic down to Levi's on game day is a problem. Really quick, I do have the story, if you guys want, on okay. uh, the issue there. So right. uh, over 2,500 people have signed a petition demanding to speak of the 49ers over a rule changes for Levi Stadium parking before games. This new policy is called Directed Parking. It's a system where parking lot attendants will direct cars into the next available spot. The petition, which was started by uh, Niners Empire, uh, says this prevents parties from parking next to one another, causing problems for large tailgates, and is uh, just representative of the poor communication between the 49ers and season ticket holders. Mm. So basically, yeah, it, it prevents people from getting together and tailgating together and <laughs> just inconveniences them on game day. You know what the pro- okay. You know what the problem is with the parking lot? Because trust me, I've been in a million parking lots. Okay? It's the ingress, egress, the setup that they have, and the stupid... They, this is another thing that they championed. We're all going to march in. All of us. 49-mile walk. And they have this one section where they walk right through the middle of the, ta- of the entire parking lot. So you can either go left or right, and they split the whole thing up. And it ruins the whole parking lot. It, it is. It, it's as if it's not good. this happens a lot, and with like uh, with SFMTA and DPW, they look at it on Google Earth, and they're like, "Let's change this from four lanes to two lanes. This looks good. This looks good. good on a computer." And then you drive down, and you're like, "This is the dumbest oh, thing I've ever seen." Don't let this the practical it. application. Have any of the people creating the rules ever been to a tailgate? What? Have they ever actually driven in and out of a game on game day? It's a, it's a big problem for me. Honestly, it's one of my biggest sticking points. Don't let the season go awry because Stadium Talk will <laughs> run rampant here. Uh, what did you see this? 408. It's the mobile text line. No spine, Bonte. Not trying to criticize the Niners. No, I'm not trying to criticize colleagues that I work with. That's what that is. Well, no, I live with God these people. I, said I love these things. people. They're part yeah, of my that, family. That's, that's where I'm at with that. I, I don't do that. The, the Niners put out for about five straight years when they were trying to sell the public on it. The fan experience. That was the whole, the whole thing with Levi's was selling the fan experience well, and how candlesticks fan, fan experience, experience of you? getting in and out was dilapidated. Cause, cause and old. You, know what? It's, it's I, identical. I hear, you know what? I hear it both ways. I hear fans say the fan experience is great at the tailgates when they're winning. Nobody complains about it. Nobody complains about anything when they're winning. When they're winning, and then when they lose, we're complaining about everything. Wait, time. The, the took, complaining is very minimized when they win games. Bonte, very minimized. Everybody complained at the Detroit well, game and at the Dallas game the year prior. Getting off the freeway into the stadium took an hour and a half for everyone. It was a wild. Ten years in. Guess what? That happens in a lot of stadiums. A lot of stadiums. It did not take an hour and a half to get from you know Third Street me, to Gilman. You know how long it took me to get into the U.S. Open? Flushing Meadows? A lot of people gone. Happens when you got 70,000 people trying to go to one place at one time. All right.